G'day listeners, this episode is proudly brought to you by our sponsors, supshq.com.au. Use BWB15 at checkout to receive 15% off and direct shipping. G'day listeners and welcome back to another episode of your favorite shit talking podcast, Bros and Brains, joined by yourself, myself, yourself, yourself myself, yeah. <laughs> yourself and myself, and me, myself and Irene. There are three of us here in my head. We are off to a flyer. We've nailed this. <laughs> Not sure who's in prep, and, Michael. And, and start again. <laughs> <laughs> no, fuck that. We're in too far in. Hey, joined by on. my co-host, Scaffy. How are you doing, my friend? Tired, man. Fucking, I think I'm still fucking sick from being in Brisbane last time. I think <sighs> Brisbane just make people sick. Bro, I'm fucking cooked. Tired as shit, but nah, not too bad. Not too bad. Probably just need, you know, when you just need like one or two good nights sleep in a row and you yeah. sort of like it, it kicks off and it passes. I think that's what yeah. I'm due for. It's like one or two good nights where I just die. And then. Bone is on do not disturb from 8 p.m. I'm in bed. Literally, I think it's gonna be one of those one of those sleeps where it's just drop every sleeping tablet on the planet and just <laughs> two hundred milligrams of melatonin. Literally, just like you know, tell dad and be like, you know, if I don't, if I'm not awake by this time, just make sure I'm not dead. <laughs> just just... Dial zero zero, and if I yeah. don't answer, dial yeah. again. Yeah, it's like if you, if you don't hear me breathing, maybe give an ambulance a call. <laughs> Actually, no, don't even worry about it. Just leave it. It's fine. <laughs> we're we're, we're, we're there now. I gave it a crap. <laughs> yeah. See what happens. But um, yeah, it's a bit like that at the moment. Nice. But yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. Played uh, St. Andrews again, which is my favorite course on Monday with a couple of mates, which is always nice. Very good. Played eight over, which is good. Take that every day of the week. It's my course. <laughs> I love that course. <laughs> I only got the no. Yeah, literally. It's like I played with two guys that never played it, which is always fun because it's kind of like, I'm like, how do we want to play this? Like, because if you want to go aggressive, like that, that's your that's your line. We want to aim for that tree, but if you want to be a bit, you know, a bit more safe, then you probably go that tree. <laughs> 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 like, which way do we want to play this? But yeah, that was good. It's been good. Just been fucking flat out, which is good. Which is good. Which Can't is good. complain. Mm. Looking at buying a new car, which is really annoying because I'm not into cars. That's fair. Um, so trying to buy a car is really annoying when you don't know what you want to buy. New, new, or like use new. I uh, probably use new, but like relatively new, like 20, 20 up. Yeah. 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 I, I, I have this weird conversation. I'm like, I don't know. Cause like I have a nice taste in cars, but like it doesn't phase me. Like they're just cool things to look at. Like I, I would have to wonder where my income line is where I'm like, you know what? I do want that Porsche 911 or that uh, uh, bloody hell. What do you call it? 67 GT. Like to me, I'm like, I wonder where that, that line is to, to warrant even wanting it. But otherwise to me, I'm like, a new car is just another Mazda that I can get from A to B to feel efficiently. Yeah, 100%. And I'm, I'm kind of like that as well. But um, I don't know. I'm in a, in a funny point. Like I've, I'm fortunate enough to have a pretty like decent like budget for a car for like my business. So it's like, you know, I'm not into cars, but then everyone, like my accountant and stuff, they're like, you know, get this particular type of car or this priced car because of, you know, obviously tack offsets and shit. Mm-hmm. My call... But it's almost like decision fatigue because it's kind of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, what do I get? I don't do cars. Do I want the Audi TT? Do well, I want the Quattro? Well, I'm literally looking at a BMW X5 and I'm like, I feel like a wank. I drive a fucking Toyota Camry Sport. <laughs> <laughs> you fuck with me. I've got 2014 Sport, bro. I'm like, this car is fucking, you know how good it is? It's got Bluetooth, it's got aircon. Yeah. Fuel efficient and it's Toyota. Windows go down half or full. <laughs> Bro, every every time I get it serviced, the, the, my mechanic is like, "I love this car because it's so easy." <laughs> I'm like, nice. "Yeah," and I had a Commodore before that, which is even easier. Nice. So I've never had a problem. And fucking everyone's like, "Yeah, go get this car." I'm like, oh, fucking, I don't know. I was gonna get a bloody Raptor because I wanted a Raptor. Can't get a Raptor because they're only fucking two liter engines. They're tiny. I'm like, oh, come on, boring. Man. Like, get a key yeah. stinger. I mean, could, <laughs> could, <laughs> could. So it's like just trying to find one. I'm just like, I can't be fucked. Just go something really like left field, like one of those um Coda, Coda fucking <laughs> little fucking electric box uh, engine. Was it a, a Haval or whatever they're called? Yeah. Get a fucking <laughs> Nissan Cube. <laughs> that fucking key. Are you making fun of my automobile? <laughs> no, go the opposite and just get like a fucking Pajero. Just go fucking just huge. An unnecessary city car. 100%. And then just drive it around the city. For all that off-roading that you do. 
<laughs> that's, what, that's what I wanted a Raptor, so I can just drive it. A fucking city. hundred series Land Cruiser that you'll never take out anywhere ever. Yeah, and just take t- take up two car spots when I'm in the city. <laughs> <laughs> just park sideways. <laughs> it's like, well, let's just park it. It's just like the tray is that big. It's like, uh, that's not my fault. It's my car. What yeah. can I do? Okay, why not? Have you seen me? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking huge, bro. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Speaking of which, are you growing yet or what? Nah, fucking don't even. Go hate you. He fucking hate you. He does. I'm at, uh, if I you give I'm, me more than four weeks of a fucking a mini cut, I'm just I'm just gonna. Bro, I, 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 I came in at 91 kilos this morning. I'm like I'm fucking withering away. I haven't been 91 since I was 10. So I don't hey, know. just shave and I'll run your peak week for fucking nationals. <laughs> bad. <laughs> got two more days to deplete. Fuck it, let's do it. Go on the 90s. This is fucking bad. I could too. <laughs> probably place better than half the people in there anyway let's be real <laughs> but anyway we won't get into that because apparently wbff is the uh, best of the best ah <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh stop it oh man. jesus christ i've seen some Give dumb me... shit from some dumb like from coaches this week and it's like <sighs> like I've, I've seen that that comment where you know apparently the best of the best compete in wbff cool give me like of, one give me one wbff pro like just name one that's done anything but for chicks for chicks i can kind of see it but even still then it's like it's the best of their end of bodybuilding because it's also like beauty so it makes more yeah. sense yeah but that's what i'm saying like, give it. me one one male wbff pro that's done anything could not tell you I, I, me either right so you got that and then there's another coach very popular coach down here in melbourne she's posted that she got asked a question about squatting the barbell squats and she's like, I can't barbell squat. Because... Oh, no, so she asked, sorry, got asked about her height. She's like, yeah, I'm like 170 something centimeters tall. So she's obviously very tall um, and lanky, like long legs. And she's like, and I've got really long femurs. It's why I can't barbell back squat. It's like, that's not even what? really tall. I'm 176. Bro, like, like, bro, fucking like, funny. if fucking half tall Bjornsson can squat, <laughs> yeah. you, believe yeah. me, you could squat. <laughs> what are you talking about? You fucking yeah. moron! Like everyone, right, over... long femurs I'm, stop me squatting. I'm 100. And, I'm 183 centimeters. I I squat. And I, the guys taller than me that fucking squat more than me. Like, what are you talking about? Figure out your fucking hip and knee biomechanics and fucking squat if you want to squat. Yeah. And that's an actual coach. But anyway, that's that. That's you, how the week's been this week. <laughs> can you get knee flexion on your hack squats? Okay, cool. Then what's the difference? Why can't you squat? Yeah, because people are dumb. Fuck me, dead. But yeah, hey, like WF. Where the best of the best bodybuilders go to compete. Uh, that's no comments. How it is. No, it's, no just comments. Like a, it's just like a certain organization being bought out. But <laughs> yeah, like we won't get into that one either. Uh, it's funny what, part, what happened like, in the last seven days. But anyway. Oh man, the, my, it's like I don't know if people think like I don't know because if I appear young or what, but like I'm naive and don't have a network of people that I can just validate claims through, like. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. It just, it just, it irks me, but it also doesn't. It just gives me a laugh because I'm like, I don't want to, I don't want to stir into it. I can just straight up get the answer I want from the people in my network. So I will. Oh, that's not the case to be true. Fantastic. You're wrong. Great. Stop spreading lies around Australia. Yeah. I like the WBFF is the best fed, but anyway. I mean, it's relative. <laughs> They're the best fed for beauty pageantry and jackness, I guess, combined. For what women? Yes. But I don't, I don't know. Yeah. But the, uh, it was a dude. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. I don't they, like, this one. they they fucking wear suits, don't they? Isn't there a division where they wear? I don't know. Don't they? Isn't that uh, their, they have dress up? They have they the money suits? grab, which is like you do ball gown gown night, and oh, it's like it's like called gown or ball night, uh, where you basically dress up and you register for that. Then you have to do actual muscle model night, which is the physique competitive so side. Do, you, do you get judged on yeah you judge on both yeah fucking fuck off yeah so you know look power to them i'm probably never going to coach anyone wf because i just don't know it i just i can't play that level of the game i can't play into the pageantry side to care enough no, i'll just no. straight up tell a coach like client if they ever consult me for it like i'm just not your guy one and done mate i'm never doing that again <laughs> 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 never, never, never. Don't get me wrong. She obviously did very fucking well. We won't name names, but yeah, nah, I'm good. <laughs> I'm, I'm good. Definitely won't do that shit again. I think I'd rather die. Yeah, that's that. That's uh, where we are. Yes. It's been an interesting seven days of <laughs> yeah, right, and 
I don't know. Like I, I keep thinking we're going to run out of stuff to talk about. Things just keep happening. I'm just like, okay. Just, so people just keep posting stupid shit. You just sit there like, oh, okay, I'll talk about it. Yep. Yep. But like, we do. I don't know. It. Like every season, there's just always going to be claims from people about certain judging and criteria and potentials and what did or didn't happen. And like, it just, I don't know. It, it opens you up to conversation then. Like if you don't want, if you don't want it to be criticized, don't put it out there. Yeah, uh, well, it's, I mean, I don't think that people genuinely probably care that much or if they did, it's just like, well, say something. But if you're going to talk like that and start saying stupid shit, then you get stupid shit said about you, I guess. And it's like, we're not, I guess, directly talking about anyone unless the people follow the people we talk about. But it's like, link in the description. No. <laughs> um... <laughs> Honestly, tell them, because then it gives us a discussion point. They can come back and say, hey, this is why well, I did no, X, Y, just... Z. Okay. I'm sure I'm I'm sure there's probably people that have a podcast that talk about shit that we probably post, but who gives a fuck? I hope so. God, I hope so. It'd be fun. And if there is, please invite me on. Yeah. Uh, well, Can please. someone share me a piece, please? Like I'll be so I happy. Would, I would love to jump on that. That'd just be fun. Like I wouldn't even be mad. It'd just be fun. Yeah. I'd love to be I just want to be challenged. Just give me something. Gives me yeah. a highlight to my week. I'm gonna yeah, go on and stir the pot. Okay. Just shit talk some some crap and just see what happens. Yeah. But hey, maybe I learned something. Maybe I learned something I didn't know. But we do have a topic of conversation today, apparently. Uh, I guess we got two. Yeah, I guess we'll say two. Well, what we got? Uh, well, by the time this lands, will be the day before Michael's uh, final show for the season, which will be Nationals Season 8. Um, so I guess it's not like it's going to be a hidden factor. I think we'll announce it before then. But um, So we made some changes, made some strategy changes at the end of States uh, when we saw his like, weight potential. Um he came off stage and his free meal weekend at 95. So we put him into a, gave him like basically one or two day deplete Monday and Tuesday, just to, just to drop down and brush off a bit of the extra uh, retained glycogen and water weight, pull that down just a little bit and then put him to basically maintenance all week. Um, and then we basically mapped out a strategy to have him within striking distance of under 90. So that was a, um, Pretty much he hit 90, 89.5 this morning, which is perfectly where I wanted to be. Exactly One more day tomorrow where we'll start to introduce fats depending on his wake-up weight. But I'm expecting with gastric emptying, he'll be, again, about that 89, 89.5. Shouldn't mm-hmm. see a much drastic difference between now and then. We'll put some fats in to slow down digestion because we don't need to lose any more weight. Um, and then basically, yeah, the plan is to give him... Basically, the feedback was he was more suited to bodybuilding, which you know you can see a mile away. Um, <laughs> he had the potential for classic. I just don't think he has the natural flow, uh, as we've already sort of talked about. So exactly. it was like, look, do classic for fun. We've got novice in there. But we thought our best chance, because again, I don't encourage competing for the experience. I encourage competing because you love training and dieting and bodybuilding and winning. And if there is growth along the way and benefits along the way, fantastic. That's a part of it. Um, but it's not like you're the first toe touch into dieting should be a fucking prep so given that michael is quite conditioned and very seasoned and he's trained for a long time i was like dude do you want to put your best foot forward or just go for fun and he's like i want to win i was like cool this is what it mapped out and made sense in my head and he's like let's do it so we basically strategized to get him down to under 90s as he did novice and first timers quite well i might add um for states and, and basically blew the fucking blew him out of the water with his conditioning so Gives us a bit more room to fill up and have some fun. So we got him down to 89.5 to weigh in for under 90s at, at nationals, which I think will be his best chance to really show off his condition and the size. Because by the time we fill him back up, I'm looking at at least a 93 to 94 kilo physique on stage. So, um, you know, that's going to give him quite a pop and still be fucking diced and be sharp and crispy. So, yeah, basically we're going to aggressively backload carbs straight after weighing. I basically told him to have two meals ready to go straight off the, uh, as soon as he hops off the scale. So have one at, at check-in location and then have one in the car on the way home because you got about 14, what are we set? 12 to 1300 carbs to get in on that day. So basically it'll just be fucking fill up from that point onwards and eat. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Look, I mean, like I said, when we had that conversation last week or wherever it was, and it was like two days until for weigh-in. It's like, hold on yeah yeah even if you were to scrap him down to almost like 88 and mm. fill, fill on the day of weigh like you could probably get one meal in before he goes to weigh in and he should be okay yeah you know what i mean and then you can literally start the load from like that morning yeah. 
get him up and you know even if he's 88 and a half 89 89 and a half who gives a fuck as long as yeah. he's on the 90 he weighs in and then keep filling and fill to you probably yeah. fill him like in a 24 hour 48 hour span like you'd be maybe 93 at 93 would be probably a good a good fill 93 yeah. even 94 by pushing yeah um man it's gonna look fucking phenomenal like, yeah it's gonna look stupid like yeah the, so the, the only that pop. the the goal we we had um i think that was actually one of the questions today the goal we had was that a i needed to prove again that i can get someone in condition um you know tom was tom was fucking conditioned but yeah. again it was like well now i'll get at the next level of condition and show that i can repeat the process and the strategy and we did so yeah. for me it was like michael won't be the biggest but i think with where he started and how we kept him in condition i mean the dude started prep well i'd say he finished his off season his bulk at 110 and at 5,000 calories. So from where we were to be at 110, to be down where he is now, like he started in a good spot. It wasn't yeah. soft or anything. So it gave us a really good position to work from. Which is, I was yeah. like, we can actually push your condition to well, be extreme. Which is exactly what I always say. Like when you start a prep, don't start fat. Yeah. <laughs> like start prep in a really decent position. The only time you can start a prep, I guess not necessarily like, I guess fat, but you'd start maybe a touch rounder is usually a female yeah only because depending on the fair depending on the class they probably don't need to come in as inside out diced yeah whereas a, like a guy is obviously very different and they also have that capacity to go there so yeah. it's like just from a physiological standpoint there's not much you can do about it but like it's relative but the relativity is very different like when you say a girl to start a prep fat yeah or sorry not fat is going to look very different to a guy starting a prep not fat yeah I mean, like Kylie, Kylie starting prep now, for instance, with me, actually, most of my girls are about to start their preps or are in them. Uh, yeah. Kylie, for instance, starting a prep, like she's already very well shaped for, for bikini, for, for IPB, for girls, um, yeah. going by the conditions of what's been on stage for season A. Um, but we still have plenty of room now. For like, so it's basically been a 24, it'll be a 24 week prep for her, um, where her cows were near 3,000 starting and she was like, you know, she was soft. Still had abs for a female, so it's like that, yeah, sweet. exactly right. It's relative. You, know, you got roundness and fullness, and like you know, some curve to your glutes, hamstrings, and quads. Great, some waist, fantastic. Yeah, that all comes in. So we taper that off. We, we taper that, sorry, and pull that in, and, and that's where it's going to cut down from. So you know, yeah, very different. Um, but yeah, I mean, for for Michael now, that the strategy or the, the the endeavor for me when I looked at him and where we were was basically set the standard for condition, and as a first timer of all things, like. I mean, he he's he's come off stage basically showing Queensland conditioning. Like he's like, this is yeah. he was the Queensland condition guy. So yeah. given that Queensland is a relatively larger bodybuilding state, mm -hmm. I'm expecting good things in terms of his condition. And looking at what's been around, like you know, everyone's different. Every show's different. You can't base it on photos, and I get all that stuff. But just looking at photos, different states, and where things are, and how much time people had to really tighten up from there, it basically gave me some pretty solid confidence that Michael will be. I will say amongst even opens, he'll be one of the conditioned guys at States. Uh, there's sorry, no question. Yeah, there's no, con there's, there's no question he'll be one of the more conditioned dudes. It'll just be interesting to see how many people, especially the more experienced guys, obviously he's not really competing in the experienced categories, but um, how much more they pull out. Because we yeah. know that, that that's what they usually do. They they pull enough in just for the, the qualifier because like no one cares because yeah. there's no real qualifying criteria other than enter show up on the day yeah like enter the, on the day and you, you're good yeah so you know that the nationals is going to be or the pro qualifying show is going to be the um the show like where it's going to be everyone's going to be i think yeah. more, more on the game which would be cool to see those that were already diced yeah what they look like because if they have that potential to pull more out without you know eating into their muscle and dropping too much size it's going to be fucking interesting yeah, and that was basically our feedback was, hey, don't dig him any further, just flatten yeah. him back out. Yeah, like, which was which is what I was saying to you as well, right? It's like he doesn't need to get any leaner. Oh, no, fuck no. Like, he needs to hold and fill because... He, he was a class fight. of his own on the day. So, yeah. I mean, if that's a reflection of what's, you know, potentially from Queensland and then into the States, um, yeah, it definitely gave us a, a very high potential here to do some damage. So, I mean, you can never go into a day expecting anything except that you deliver what you can, as we've already talked about, and... Yeah, we just know that uh, come show day, his condition is going to be what's there. So, yeah. um, you know, we just fill that nicely. We've got two-day window to risk spilling. So he's never digested that much carbs before. So giving him a bit of a window, 
Saturday's a bit of a back off in digestive load. So gastric emptying should be a bit nicer on the morning. Um, and then it gives us room to have like two meals versus the, the one we had on show day. Risk that filling up a bit more across the actual show event itself um, yeah. and get some more food in. So <clears throat> it'll be good to see how that difference looks um, with a bit more pop. So yeah, I'm excited. It's um, it's going to be... It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Like to me, there's no be better... Fun. Like I don't I don't ever want to lose against... Sorry, I would never, never want to win against worse competition. If you're yeah. winning, it's because you've won against or placed against the best that have to offer. Yeah, well, it was like one of the questions that I got for today was, um, does it count if you're the only one in your division? More so aimed at like the the natural feds where, you know, a lot of them have like 55 different divisions and it's kind yeah. of like this, but I mean, even all the way up to the amateur Olympia, like they have like all these different divisions and it's like, I don't know, because there's, there's two sides to that where it's like, you need to be in it to yeah. actually have a shot, right? And getting there and on stage, yeah. especially in a bodybuilding sense and even like a powerlifting sense to get to the platform or get to the stage takes a lot. So yeah. it's like you if you in itself have already, I guess, won by yeah. getting there. Exactly. Then, hey, if no one else has come up to your like or competed in your category, well, I mean, that's obviously not your fault. So yeah. like what can you do? It's like, is it technically a win? Well, yeah, because you rocked up. Others did yeah. for whatever the reason. Of, the amount of like and we like Doherty runs that that conversation every single year, basically, at, at like every state show or national show is for every one person who made it, how many didn't get there? And it's like, as cliche as it is, it is true. Like, yeah, sure, you you want to win against the best, excuse me, um, and you want to go against a full category and a stacked lineup and all that sort of shit. Like, first time is to me, novice to me, and bodybuilding was unreal because there was so many people. It was awesome. Even even um, uh, 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 call-outs for open under-90s, that to me was unreal because I was the back end of third call-outs last time versus – first call outs in a, uh, I think it was what, 15 competitors or so in yeah. those three groups of five um, or, or six, whatever it was. Um, so, you know, th- that's, those things are the fun, but you know, just the fact in getting there, we know amongst the population, if we look at this, at the actual population size and we start to deviate away from just being gen pop gym lover, the amount of people that train, the amount of people that train with uh, um, structured dieting, then the amount of people that, that dedicate time to bodybuilding, then the amount of people who actually execute a prep, then the amount of people who follow through and get on stage for that prep. They're all deviations away from the mean that shows how actually crazy it is to get up there and, and be competitive, if you will, because there's so many different standard deviations away from that number. Now, that in of itself is impressive. You managed to do it. So yeah, is it, does it mean like, you know, can you go on an ego rant, like sort of I'm the best, blah, 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 because I won? I wouldn't personally. I'm like, look, I turned up, fuck it, I won. But exactly. at the end of the day, Exactly. I wouldn't be going around being like, fuck everyone, I'm the best. Yeah, and that's the thing. And it's like, you know, especially if you're doing like social media stuff and all that, it's kind of like, it's not difficult to say, hey, like, yeah, I rocked up on the day. I, this is how I look. Yeah. I came first, but I mean, I came first against nobody. So, you know, while technically I am number one, I'm not yeah. because there was no one there to compete against. Yeah. But again, like, like I said, the other side to that conversation is if no one else competed, well, that's not your fault. Yeah, the credit belongs to you. You did it. Yeah, like you, like you did the work. You got there. Yeah. Like, not, it's, you know, you don't know what happened. Other people could have done the work, failed, didn't make it, or you know, it could be just a, a genuine um, category that suits you better than it suits everyone else. Like, so, yeah, fucking so be it. Yeah, I mean that that in of itself is like the the difference. Like I said, you know, there's there's people who aren't going to make it. So yeah. technically, like as we know, a prep or a bodybuilding prep or a powerlifting prep is the work leading up to the day. And then obviously the activity on the day of posing or, or doing your lifts and meets and, and what have you. But, you know, most of the actual show goes on behind the scenes up until the point the day is on. So if you manage to get there and execute and turn up and others didn't, well, fuck it. I mean, kudos to you. You did the job. That's part of the game. Being able to yeah. turn up every single day under pressure, under the exhaustion, fatigue, get into whatever condition and size and shape your requirements are for category. Sweet. Good for you. Yeah, um, yeah exactly right. But yeah, so you know, Michael, he's done literally everything. I, I, I could not be prouder of him as a coach and a person. Like he's, you know, I fucking almost teared up with the messages they sent afterwards, even from State Show and what they're excited for with this show, um, and sort of just thanking me and how much the the direction and the the planning and the the goal setting and stuff has changed their life, and sort of just reignited a bit more of a, a love for having bigger passions and plans. So. For me, like it's the, the season's already a win for him. You've already got three medals from season fucking from uh what do you call it? States. So, you know, you can't really walk away from that season unhappy. You set a standard of condition that basically the rest of Queensland was compared against. You can't walk away with that unhappy. 
Um, so now it's just a matter of just putting the icing on the cake, fucking sealing the deal and just seeing what turns up on the day. Yeah, exactly. And it's going to be fucking fun. I'm, I'm like, I'm already more excited for him than he is. Like, I think he's just sort of taking in each day and I'm just like, oh, fuck, this is going to be fun. This, this, and this. So... Yeah, exactly. And we've, right. we've, we've tweaked, we've tweaked the, we've tweaked the tanning protocol. As that was like the biggest feedback was just get darker. So we've we've teed up three days now instead of two to make sure that he's triple coated and set all. He'll be coated, washed off, double coated, double coated. Yeah, and then double so, coat again, and then double coat again, plus a top coat. So boy is going to be dark, and we'll just keep uh, filling that that tan up and making sure that it sticks, um, so that by the end of the day it's not washed off and he's in his best chance of. Of doing well, and I think only doing the three categories versus five will just save his tan as well. It won't be as sweaty and washed and under the light. So yeah, all these different factors we got for feedback that we implemented straight away, and I organized. And you know, I feel like as a coach, that's our only really role in bodybuilding. Is like there's not a lot we can strategize with. Like yeah, you know, once we identify we could do nineties and put that best foot forward to win, that was like yeah. our call to make. Um, you know, correcting correcting tanning feedback. So getting in touch with our tanning girl. Um, you know, we use um. We use her every time and just sort of said, Hey, look, yeah, this is the feedback we got. So um, whatever your strategy is to make it darker, I trust you. She came back with a plan. I said, sweet, execute. Same thing. We went to Michael with the feedback about fullness, set a plan, let's execute. That's really the only roles we have as a coach in bodybuilding. So, you know, Literally. it's all done. So well, that's all you can do. You can only do the prep and help them prep and get to where they need to be. And at the end of the day, what happens on the day happens on the day, right? You can't yeah. control the outcome and that sort of stuff from that aspect, man. It's just like, Hey, as long as they have fun, it's what I sort of do with my powerlifters. Um, you know, I get to the day and like a lot of them are so sort of stressing, and it's just like, hey, did you guys have fun? Yeah, cool, good win, good day. Yeah, don't don't care. <laughs> don't, yeah. don't care about anything. You had fun, good. See you later. I'm out. Yeah, and get, like get on a plane and come back to Brisbane. Don't get me wrong, like winning and all that on and like the, the competitiveness of it is, you know, a big part of it. But you also got to do it because you enjoy it, right? Like if you got to force yourself to be there and you got to force yourself to turn up and show up and do the food and do the cutting, do the train. Like, yes, in the back end, you will have to force yourself, but there's got to be a love of that dig and that next level that people just yeah. don't seem to have. And they, like, you know, like the, the idea of having fun doing this stuff is weird or like, yeah. you know, if it's not there. It's genuinely embrace the suck. If you yeah. don't like the suck, don't get And like you said, there are going to be times where you sit there and you're like, fuck, I cannot yeah. be bothered. But if it's only every now and then that you have that, and most of the other days, like, no, nah, I'm good. Like, it's fine. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, cool. I'm like, I love this shit. Yeah. Then, then you're going to probably be successful. Uh, and yeah. It's like, if it's more days where you're like, fuck this, I hate this, it's like, you're not going to get there. Yeah. Or you're not going to do as well as you would have liked because you're yes. doing it for the wrong reasons. And it's the exact reason why, like, I don't compete because <laughs> yeah. I have no love for competing right now. I'm just like, eh, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> like, most of, most of my message to you in like the last sort of two and a half weeks was like, fuck you i'm hungry when are you thinking of filling me up but also can we cut deeper i'm fucking i'm, I'm loving this shit like <laughs> give me more cardio give me more this can i do this like how can i take this and you're just like it's not, it's just shut up yeah. but like that's that to me that's coaches. the fun part right like you have yeah. fun with the can i be more fucked up and sadistic with this but also give me food yeah exactly right so it's like find the balance i'm gonna complain you... but also enjoy it <laughs> exactly i'm gonna complain and also be happy about complaining because balance exactly yeah Anyway, that was, yeah, point one, basically. Bit of a touch-up for, for where Michael is and, and sort of what the plan is come Sunday because this will drop on Saturday and we'll all have a fucking, yeah. Party. Good time. Yeah. And what was the second topic? Uh, okay, so I got a message after, literally, it must have came in, I think, 2 p.m., like literally after we finished last week's fucking podcast. Someone sent me a message. was like, hey, I, uh, idea for the podcast. And I was like, oh, that's a good rant. Um, basically let's scroll back here. Da -da -da -da. Wait, wait, wait. Come on. What do we got? Where are we? Where the fuck is it? Um, oh, there we go. Okay. I want your opinion on something for the podcasts that I've been witnessing. Don't know if it's podcast worthy, but if you were going to allow kids under the age of 18 working out in your gym, do you have a responsibility to ensure these kids or newbies to that degree aren't going to hurt themselves? The kid's mum was this older bird, but, uh, who you can see, who you can see, I had no idea about what happens in a gym. Um, I know she holds responsibility by letting them come there, but you can't let these kids into your gym without parental supervision and then not take responsibility or at least attempt to educate them. Yeah, I guess the, the tricky part on this is also, one, the situation of bringing the kid to the gym, right? Like how old's the kid, for example? Um, because sometimes, you know, like 
I mean, not sometimes like you know, because we don't know, we don't have kids. But from what we've seen, <laughs> sometimes, sometimes you can't do much about it. Like sometimes you just have to take your kids where you go. And I guess if it's a place where, oh no no. Parents... So to rephrase this, they're they're training. The kids are training, and they're okay, so... like they're like fourteen uh, to seventeen. Okay, so they're teenagers. Yeah. Okay, and the parents are just showing them the ropes type scenario. Yeah, I guess mum's like, hey, let's go check out this gym. I want you to get into training or perhaps yeah, we'll help yeah, the sport. Okay. okay, yeah, for me, that, unless the parents are qualified coach, even I guess not even qualified, right? I guess we'd say experienced. Yeah. Because um, we know qualifications don't really mean much these days. Yeah. Yeah. But let's say experienced enough to be able to show the kid what to do and how to do things properly and making sure that, you know, the proper rep schemes and set schemes and stuff are in place for a child or a teenager, we'll call it um i just literally refer to a pt it's just like hey it'd probably be cheaper to say here go get five sessions with this pt yeah. here even if it's a new pt like you know no idea at least they're gonna have you know probably a better indication hopefully of like how to actually mm -hmm. do some machine work because that's all you're going to do with a teenager anyway you're not going to probably give them too much free weight work depending on development and stuff like that and where their yeah. like a spatial awareness is and all that sort of stuff not to say that you can't it's just usually the safer bet and hedging your bets would be just throw them on a couple of machines and have some fun. Yeah. And I guess then it comes to where does the gym fall in at least attempting to show them? Because like, I think the thing for me that becomes an issue is there's a large, and I know you love a good opinion on this because you own a gym. Um, there's a large in, influx of younger gym girls nowadays but it's for you know doing tiktok dances and fucking setting up tripods and all that yeah, sort of shit that yeah, 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 just yeah. becomes frustrating yeah. um but like uh, where does the gym fall in the responsibility of saying like look this is good practice or best practice or even if you yeah. don't want a pt well, session like you got two free sessions from the gym as a compulsory the, uh the, the thing is you as a the way i look at it from being a gym owner if it, not that i own a commercial or semi-commercial gym i own yeah. a class-based gym but even from our perspective like once the parents come in and say, Hey, do you mind if I bring my kid? And obviously they have to be the right age for the, to be able to train. But also we ask the the parent a ton of questions and we have waivers for the parent and the kids to sign, right? Not necessarily more so a, a, an injury list and stuff like that for the kid that the parent can mm -hmm. fill out and stuff. But the parent obviously has to sign off of it, of Absolutely. everything in the screening process for a commercial gym. That's where you'd probably attack it. Right. It's like, Hey, you know, what's the go, blah, blah, blah. Like, what are you wanting to, do with like the kid in the gym you know mm -hmm. then you can suggest hey a session a pt session because most pts that are um, employed or i guess contracting to the gym usually do free sessions because that's how yes. they get their, their leads it's kind of mm -hmm. like you know you sign up to the gym for a membership you get three free sessions type scenario it's like okay well sign up to the gym and do your pts with these this person mm -hmm. You know, even if you're not going to sign up and do more PT with them, at least you get three sessions to get around the gym, try some equipment and, you know, learn a little bit. You know, it's not much, but it's a start, right? Mm -hmm. That's how I would look at it. Yeah. And I think, um, yeah, kind of, there's, there's, you can't really tell people what to train or in the sense of like, look, you're going to come to this gym. If this is how you're going to do it, your bullshit can fuck off. But there's been this weird polarization or I don't want to say sexualization of just like the, the cringy broccoli top fucking Psalm goblin type set up your tripod, record random shit and just worry about getting Instagram fucking views or TikTok views and, and whatever and get in the way. And so there's like a degree of arrogance that falls on these kids that they think they know shit because they've got a TikTok and watched fucking, I don't know, old bro, this guy with, 600,000 followers tell you about how to not worry about this exercise or this program and just, you know, do some weird fucking pump movement. So it gets like to this point where it's kind of like there's a degree of accountability. The kids have to be, you know, the kids have to be aware that they know fuck all, or at least come in with that understanding, you know, fuck all. And that way you can actually benefit from experience and some help and to, to improve. But I think then also the parents like looking at why the kids are in the gym. Cause to me, when we started training, we had our rugby league program at school. So our teachers, part of it was it was an excellence. Uh, it was basically a, a rugby league program, development program. So we had Broncos, like S&C guys come in. We had skills trainers come in. Some days that was in the gym to show you power patterns, movement patterns, biomechanics, yeah. basics. Like, you know, not to say that we're full talking about, you know, fucking length and shortened positions, but more so no. this is how you open your gate, get into a squad, yeah, yeah, exactly. into the knee, break at the hips. Yeah. 
drive out for power. Yeah, we had rotational movements in and there for wrestling. M- most of them probably like third year students trying to do their placement hours. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. Exactly yeah. right. So, you know, not it's not a bad system. So yeah. we kind of went in there and a lot of the programs, like they were positional programs. Realistically, it was like a front rower had to get, you know, more power, but also more cardio endurance. So they stopped being fat front rowers. The backs had more like a bit of more explosive work and some more size building stuff, like get stronger and bigger because you're tiny and you're a back and you need to be able to be faster and be able to take a hit. So it was kind of like some positional programs, but a lot of the time it was basics around like three by 10, um, you know, sorry, three sets of 10 of two or three compound movements. Unfortunately, like some of it was a bit bro splitty. Some of it was pretty good looking back on it now. Um, some of it includes some power movements that we would have on some days. So we got a pretty decent exposure to it. And then it just became about mixing in your own and actually going to the gym and doing it. So when we went to the gym, we weren't there to be dicks because there was no TikToks and shit then. It was no like, I'm going to capture this for a social media platform. It wasn't really a thing. So we kind of had the intent of why we are in the gym, what we're training for. It wasn't really like a, just go in there and wing it and wing it. take yeah. two, three hours. And there was some form of structure. Yeah. And that yeah. kind of like gave us the responsibility then and we know what they're for. And, you know, it's, it's on us to do it right or, or go yeah. see our coach to get more advice or, you know, go to the school gym and put it in practice there. Um, but yeah, it's an interesting one. Like if there's a gym where they're just letting young kids run rampant and, you know, not take any responsibility for the fact that they will injure themselves because they saw old mate on TikTok who has no responsibility or degree of ownership to that person's health caught up about doing this movement on a fucking BOSU ball yeah. and they go to try and replicate it. Well, it's actually on you as the gym owner to step yeah, in and say, step, yeah. hey, guess what? That's fucking dumb. Yeah. Probably don't do that. Yeah, because 100%. if they get injured, it's on you. Yeah, and, that, and that's the thing though. So it's like... <laughs> It's funny in that I still come up from the time where when you do your cert three and your cert four, like they did mean something. So it's like your cert three, you could work in the gym on the gym floor and your job was to walk around, help out where possible, not give personal training because you're not qualified to, but you can give basic instruction and guidance and help those around. And that was always like when I first started and did my cert three, I mean, that's what I did. So it's like, I I don't know how it operates now. I don't think it operates like that anymore. I think most fucking staff members at most commercial gyms just sit at the fucking front desk and you know maybe walk around to clean up and all that sort of shit they don't really when when i started similar to you like it was if you wanted to work at the gym even as like reception especially in like a smaller commercial gym if you will even yeah like if you weren't a sales staff if you were at any point walking if you if you you were a three yeah if you're a cert you had to have a cert three to work as a gym receptionist because as part of your job as a gym receptionist to walk around the gym floor and clean up and make sure everyone was being safe so you know, if that was still the case, then you wouldn't have, I guess, as many problems or potentially yeah. as many problems. But if you're not attacking it at the screening process, because that's the initial mm-hmm. point of contact, well, you know, you got to have to have these people walking around making sure that, mm-hmm. you know, the kids are being safe and stuff like that. But also, I guess there is a bit of liability on the parent to say, yeah. hey, like the parent needs to be able to understand that they can't do everything. And it's like, hey, if you're, yeah. not, if you're not qualified, if you're not, educated if you're not experienced um in the gym then literally why wouldn't you refer out for your kid because if you want to provide for your kid and give your kid everything that you know they want because that's what apparently parents do or some parents do apparently um well you would be saying hey maybe i'll just go pay that 70 to 100 bucks for that pt Mm -hmm. get them to show them some things and see how they go yeah or you like or you literally do a joint pt with your kid yeah, do a two or three session pack for three weeks or four weeks. Do, get some do experience. T- and do it together. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think I don't know. So, some parents might mistake it as thinking like a gym is a, a drop off center or like a, a, a child care or like a minding. Like, yeah. uh, you know, I'll be sure my kid's okay because they're at this gym for two hours, I think, and not hurting themselves. It's kind of on you then if something does kind of happen because you haven't paid to them to get further assistance. Well, they're just have, winging it. You have to sign off the waiver. The parent has to sign off for their kid to go to the gym. Yeah. Like they, they physically have to walk in and sign the contract and say, yeah, okay. Like even whether it's a casual or not, they have to sign the um, liability waiver. Yeah. So I don't know. There's a, there's a, a bit on both ends in terms of like actually taking care of the child. Um, well, if it's a commercial gym, most commercial gyms have kids that come in for high school students, you know, between that three, was it three and five peak time or three thirty yeah. and or four and six or whatever the peak time is yeah. for school students. Like, They'd ha- they'd surely have something in place to deal with that. Or most commercial gyms, I would imagine, would have some something in place, whether it's behind the scenes or whether it's you know actually in the contracts and stuff, 
to to help with that because how often do we really hear about you know school kids getting I guess hurt in the gym? It's like it's not that yeah. common. It's not that often. Yeah, they'll do um, dumb shit, but they don't really get hurt. No, nah, well, yeah, they they do they do stupid shit. Like I had a mate of mine send me a fucking Snapchat video the other day that um someone was t- t- vaping while squatting like. Nice. In, in, in between in, in between squats had a vape like on the bench next to him so he was sitting down had a vape and then went and squatted hey. and half yeah, squatted the oxygen capacity to handle that kudos well, well just like yeah i mean you know like i get it but same time you have gyms that are allowing that <laughs> yeah true yeah so fuck i mean i, I can't I don't, I don't know like i think my old school pt habits kick in when i train if i see dumb shit like i watched some kid on the pendulum um the other day at powerhouse like oh I don't say quarter, I'll say half rep, but like half rep and then he set, he basically stopped with about 20 reps left in the tank. And I was like, I saw him get on the next set. I just jumped over there and I was like, all right, dude, like move your feet up a little bit, let your knees break down, just get one safe rep right to the bottom so you won't hurt yourself. And then now we're going to set some intensity. And I just fucking kicked his ass. He was perfectly fine. Like he was, it wasn't there like I was coaching him, but more so like if you're going to do this, you're, you're going to actually risk more injury by stopping halfway, loading your knees and trying to drive out of it. So give yourself the fucking benefit of the doubt. Um, and then I saw some other kids like on a Smith machine, almost do a squat. That was basically a good morning and just compressed his spine. I was like, hold the fucking phone. And because there's no, like, you know, obviously PTs have certain hours and like, it's not always staffed by PTs. I was like, well, fuck, like I feel bad watching this. I want to step in and help. But then you also get the douchebags are like, you, you're just trying to assert dominance and be a gym bro. And I was like, well, you know, old school part of me as an old coach just kind of wants to step in and make sure you don't hurt yourself. Yeah, and it's funny because it's like not that I haven't really train, not that I ever really see kids that much at the times that I train. I train morning, like you know, early morning, like not well, not early morning, but I train at like nine nine thirty, where it's like yeah. that, that time where the morning crew have gone, and the mid morning crew haven't started. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Like the ten ten thirty crew, they haven't rocked up yet, yeah. but the six amers and seven amers they're gone. Yeah, so it's like that that little lull period, like that's the perfect time for me to train. So it's usually when I go and train, and like I don't see kids i don't see students i don't see that's fair so it's i i can't really comment much because i don't interact with them but i mean i do see newbies that come in and train yeah. because it's usually it's quiet time it's the perfect time for those that are new to come in where they probably feel a little less intimidated and want to train and sure like you know if someone is on a machine next to me or they're looking at my machine or if you know they're mm-hmm. close enough and they're doing something wrong and it's like and i like when i say wrong i mean like absurdly wrong where they're going to hurt themselves but yeah i'm going to go over and be like hey man just a heads up like yeah you know, just let you know this is what we this is how you do it or something like that and you know it, it's always greeted with you know thank you thank you thank you like i appreciate it because who doesn't want to take advice i guess from somebody that maybe semi sort of kind of looks like he trains sometimes <laughs> like it's the beard more than anything but that's fine i think it's the tattoos to be honest so like it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's must certainly have some knowledge yeah it's, it's the it's the vascularity through my tattoos that helps so it's okay um you know and they're just like very, very, very receptive to it. And it's like, well, if I see, I think if I saw a student training or a kid training and doing something wrong, I'd probably do the same thing, but you probably have to say it in a little bit of a different light. Like, you yeah. know, cause they're kids. Yeah. <laughs> cause when I think about it, when I was a kid, if I was in the gym, someone probably coming up to me politely probably wouldn't be as receptive to it. But if some fucking Jack dude came up to me and was like, Oi, dickhead. <laughs> well, that, that literally, you, you, know, how, what I, you, you our, know what I mean? Like, teams, like, cause we, <laughs> Like, so we started in year eight in the program because back then, apparently year seven is now high school. Year eight was high school. And I was at the school at the same year my both my brothers were in the same rugby league program, just at different mm-hmm. grades. So yeah. when we go to the school gym or the fucking local commercial gym, there would be five or six or seven of those guys that I've grown up with my whole life because my brothers have played with the same team for so long. And basically, like, you just get the front rowers for them who are, you know, at that time, 110, 120 kilos. I'm like, these guys are amazing. Being like, oi, you fucking stupid prick the fuck are you doing load this properly or fucking like, you know, fucking put better weight on or control the weight better or some shit. So, you know, even with their broishness of, of just playing rugby league and even get to a point where fucking they all started juicing or whatever, you just yeah. be like, Oh wow, this guy said something. I should so, probably listen. Exactly. Right. It's like taking advice from authority or someone that's above you, but it's also that advice being delivered in a way that you understand. And that's really yeah. like, the, that's okay, literally stop that. the, it's genuinely what we call the art of fucking coaching. Yeah. <laughs> I was having this conversation yesterday or the day before, and it's like, you can tell someone something 10 different ways yeah. and they're not going to get it. And then it's going to be one person from fucking middle of nowhere that's going to mm-hmm. say something and put it in a way that you haven't and they understand it. And you're like, yep. ah. <laughs> and you're but I told there, you this way. Yeah, and you're sitting there like, 
I told you 10 different fucking ways, bro. Like, that's what we talked, talked about. But that, that's the art of coaching. And that's, you yeah. know, the whole thing. And it's like knowing yeah. your audience, knowing your clients, knowing your, your people and knowing mm-hmm. how to communicate with them. And it's like, it's funny because I got told like someone that I know trains at the gym where I train and all my clients train there, right? Person's come to me and goes, you know, all your clients have resting bitch face and they look like they want to kill people. I'm like, have you seen me train? <laughs> <laughs> my clients are a mirror image of me. <laughs> yes. Correct. Headphones on, don't fucking talk to me. I want to train. <laughs> yeah. Same fucking thing, right? So it's like, you know, I, I'm able to communicate communicate with my clients really well because guess mm-hmm. what? My clients are pretty similar to fucking me. <laughs> yeah. Makes it easy. Yes. I had, I had a, a, a face-to-face day on Saturday on my birthday because, you know, why not work more? Um, it, was the, it was the only day that's in April between both state shows where I was like, I've got a free day. I'll book it in for do face-to-face with clients. And then I forgot it was my birthday. Anyway. And young, young Colby's come in, um, young fella is like, you know, he's wanting to work towards the police, also wants to train hard, wants to look at doing like a Maddie fed one day, very tall lad. So like getting into train with intensity to try and really fill out his shape is actually, you know, it's something he hasn't done before. So I explained to him like, look, um, you know, it's hard to convey intensity of training over online situations. So sometimes you just have to fucking see it or feel it. So come in for a session. He's like, yeah, sick. I'm keen as he's like, I'm actually kind of scared. I'm going to be, I'm going to fucking die. I was like, we're not going to change them. We're going to do your same program. I was like, do you have any intensifiers and like random volume shit in your program? I was like, no. I was like, that's okay. I'm just going to take you to a different level um, and kind of be able to communicate it face to face. So that's really what we're going to do. So we got him into into the session um, and pretty much just by tweaking, uh, you know, things like range of motion, control, contraction, rep cadence, speed up twice, didn't change his workout at all. Did everything the same way, but just, okay, let's add some tempo and control to your, uh, to your leg press. Let's add some tempo and contraction to your leg extensions. Let's add, you know, this and this to your RDLs probably. So you're loading directly through the hamstring, taking these things away a bit um, and take away some pain. Anyway, two yaks later, but he was like, he's now learned when he sees us train, he's like, holy fuck, is that he train every day? I was like, it's how I try to train every day. Like that degree of intensity, I now want you to emulate it. And every single post he's done since has been, holy fuck, I've got a new level of appreciation for intensity. Yeah. Like I want to train like Ben now. Because every now story you, he shares. Now you know what intensity is like. Yeah. I was like, and the thing is, because I said to him what freaked him out, I was like, I'm always trying to learn how I can train harder. Yeah. So I've got 10 years on you of different yeah. realms of training, whether it be you know bodybuilding, power, rugby league position training stuff. Like I've got 10 to 15 years of training on you. Now I'm teaching you how to do that faster than I learned it. Well, that, like, that's yeah, that's fuck. that's literally like education, right? That's what we do, yep. we pass down education. And that's where um it's like when we trained and it's just like, you know, changing your, your low lat pool or whatever it was, your low lat row. And we're like, oh yeah, just literally shift this and turn this. It's like, mm-hmm. oh, <laughs> like yes, see there, there it is. But it's because I learned that from someone, I can't remember who I think, I think I learned it from one of the muscle mentor guys. Actually, I learned it from Cal when we were doing them in Dubai. He's like, yeah, you guys just change this and turn this. I'm like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> and now I have it back. Like it immediately let lat cramp. I'm like, okay, cool, got it. So you know what I mean? Like these are the things that you learn and you get to pass on and pass down because that's the whole point. Legit. And you know, now we get, you know, rather than having to take 10 years to learn how to train hard, you can learn now, do pay for, you know, he pays for a few extra face-to-face sessions and he can go, holy fuck, that's what I'm supposed to do every session. Exactly right. So, anyway, that was both rambles. Should we get into questions? Let us do the questions. What have we got? Minimum number of days to train for muscle building and fat loss while on calorie deficit. Who are you? I don't know you. Someone who lives in Brisbane. Hmm. Hmm. Would you like to start or would you like me to start on that one? Uh, I mean, minimum effective days. How many days can you do? I mean, we've gone into like what, like minimums of things before. How many days can you do? How hard can you train? Because adding in random amounts of sets and being like, well, 80 sets will keep it off. Great. But if you're not training hard, it won't be 80 sets. So, you know, can you do three days? Can you hit enough effective volume on each rep to at least maintain the muscle tissue you've got? Train with enough intensity to have protein. That's realistically the simplest way to answer it. Yeah. So I'm going to go one step back from that and address a couple of things. So, First and foremost, it's minimum number of days to train for muscle building and fat loss while in a deficit. So uh, deficit, okay, yeah, right. yeah, deficit is the problem when it comes to muscle gain. Yeah. Um, 
not a bad idea for fat loss. <laughs> like you kind of need to be in a fucking calorie deficit, bro, to um, you know, lose body fat and lose body weight. Now, mm-hmm. this is probably again going to be more of that recomp style question where people who have been in a slight deficit in the past, you know, have also been able to gain a little bit of tissue. Yeah. Um, again, like we've addressed before, it is like a newbie type gain scenario mm-hmm. where this new stimulus or adaptation um, occurs because you've never done it before. So mm-hmm. you do have this like crazy quick response to this adaptation. And it's like the adaptation is faster than your body is able to process everything and sort of mm-hmm. get a handle on it. So it's like this almost crazy chaotic flux situation that happens which is cool it's awesome Mm -hmm. because yeah you technically can get i guess a little bigger and a little leaner at the same time now how often or how long can you do that for usually not very long the newer you are the longer you can run that for the more experience you get the harder it is to do that Mm -hmm. unless we play around with enhancement practices where we can sort of manipulate that a little bit but in a deficit you're probably not going to be building tissue so yeah, even with enhancements in, um, still, I would definitely be arguing that you don't put on actual tissue in a, a deficit, especially the severity of the deficit. Um, however, it's not to say that you can't, it's just very rare. When we look at, you know, the bell curve and those that sit inside the bell curve versus those that sit outside and being an outlier, um, yeah, you have to be in a surplus to be gaining well that's that's kind of where my answer went with where best looking to maintain the muscle you've got yeah and i would yeah that's just it like so it's really easy surplus gain muscle maintenance stay the same deficit cut (laughs) just don't cut muscle yeah um that's what we want to look at for that one uh who would you guys like to fight if consequences didn't matter (laughs) who would i like to fight as in like it's an open-ended question. Open-ended. Okay. I mean, I can't say who I'd like to fight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's some people I would fight, but just to I avoid... Mean, I, 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 I wouldn't care about... And I wouldn't care about the consequences either way. But... <laughs> um, I mean, if we're going to go look at, I guess, celebrities, I'm assuming this is probably pointed at or, you know, famous people. Um, who would I want to fight with no consequences? Yeah, I'd love to, like, as a, a, a more of an exhibition, I guess, probably than an actual fight, if that was the count. Like, I'd love to fight, like, a like a Hodger Gracie in jiu-jitsu, like, you know, probably the greatest ever jiu-jitsu fighter to go down in history. Like, or fight someone like a GSP or, a, yeah. you know, like an Anderson Silva or, you know, just, just to see what it'd be. But like I said, like an exhibition match, not a fucking get tailed up and die in the first 30 seconds. Or you do like, you know, on um, Entourage the movie, if it sh- you last a minute with Ronda Rousey, oh, <laughs> you, can t- you take her on a date. Yeah. <laughs> like that sort of shit. Like, you know, if you last a minute, you've done well. He um, breaks his arm. Yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of like, yeah, that, that'd be fun, like, to, to do that sort of shit. But, I mean, if you're going to get into a full, like, blown punch on, like, there's the people I want to punch on with aren't people I can talk about. <laughs> yeah, that's people fair. I can't, people I can't name because they definitely deserve a whack across the head. That's fair. Um, um, oh, God. Who do I want to fight? I mean, the list, the list is too long if I would, if there was no consequences. I would I would like to or I can't remember the name, but it was the newly inst like recent not recently, but within the new direction of the instituted um director of film for D- uh, for Marvel. Uh, sorry for oh. Disney. Oh, um, name. Yeah, oh, I know what you're talking about. But basically it went from everything Marvel did right and DC uh, Disney did right. To them, them getting their hands on the bullshit towards the last trilogy of Star Wars, the recent phasing of like Marvel movies. Oh, I can't remember his name, but if there was one person I would fight without the consequences. It would just be a swift headbutt to him and just severely damage his nose <laughs> for taking what I have loved and just shat all over it. And completely butchering everything. Pretty much. Yeah, it sounds about right. Um, all right, what have I got? Okay. Is there an evolutionary reason why people find it harder to lose weight? An evolutionary reason? I mean, not... (laughs) Oh, look. Sure. (laughs) 
evolutionary sure because we don't live the way we used to live depending on how far back in evolution you want to go <laughs> like we're not hunting for our food well most of us aren't hunting for our food anymore and mm -hmm. you know we, we are quite privileged to have access to food or i guess foods easily enough and i guess if you're in a country of privilege like we are like we have mm -hmm. quite highly palatable foods that are um, have a very long shelf life due to certain things that are put in it. So that obviously makes things a bit industrialization. Different. Yeah. And all that sort of stuff. But I mean, take away that sort of thing. It's really just because from an evolutionary standpoint, when it comes to losing body fat, people are just more lazy because we have access to more things. It's like mm -hmm. we have the ability to, you know, I, I, people will rely on drugs, for example, like it's, I guess, a bit of a left field thought, but I know a lot of people that rely on fat burners. When I say fat burners, I mean, real fat burners. I don't mean the ones yeah. buy over the counter um, and stuff like that. And they're just like, oh, fuck it. I'll just do this. And these are people that should not be like touching it like at all. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's like, oh, I can just run this because it'll make me burn fat faster. And it's kind of like, mm -hmm. eh, you could just clean up your diet for six weeks and that'll probably be enough. Like, yeah. um, I guess the other thing is we do have from an, uh, again, a biological standpoint or a physiological standpoint, our bodies do develop or have look like they have developed in a sense where the whole starving or starvation mode yeah. type scenario isn't necessarily a thing or impactful anymore because of generations and generations and of moving from a, a time where we hunted food and probably didn't eat for four days mm -hmm. so we needed to you know utilize that and hence body fat and all that sort of stuff and you know being the weather and all that sort of shit versus now where everything's a very very different scenario where you're not really waiting four days for your next meal and if you are mm -hmm. fucking give us a shout to help you out but <laughs> like you know you're not waiting four days for your next meal and you have the like you're lucky enough to have you know clothes on your back roof over your head type scenario so we have well, i guess that. i guess the flip to that would be then is that why for some people it was harder to lose fat is like the... back then well we don't know because i don't think back then you'd be wanting to lose fat exactly that's what i mean so the question <laughs> is more so like why was there an evolutionary reason why it is harder for some people to lose fat i don't think now there is an evolutionary reason for it to mm -hmm. be harder now it should be probably easier yeah I think people yeah, are just fair. making it harder because they're lazier yeah. because of the things that we have access yeah. to and the lifestyles that we can, we, we have. And it's like, you know, we have access to fast food. So when I yeah. say access to things, I don't mean necessarily just drugs, but it's like, we have access to fast food, which is much yeah. easier, but it's obviously much more, calorie dense, much more calorie dense, much more palatable. And that obviously yeah. leads to its own cascade of effects. So yeah, um, I think that's where uh, we break down evolution from yeah. an evolutionary standpoint where it's like, it's actually easier for us to lose it's, that because we're it's only much. recent <laughs> in human history where we've actively pursued losing weight or changing body composition. Realistically, yeah. it was like, you know, for a period of time, obesity or fatness was actually shown as a sign of wealth and almost desirability because it showed you have resources in, if we look at, you know, things like warrior civilizations, it wasn't that they intended to look shredded or jacked or be bigger. It was because, they train to be warriors and obviously fed accordingly with hunting meats, eating vegetables, having like, you know, whole food based diets. So it's only recent that we've really seen one, you know, because of the increase in abundance and the increase in, in calorie intake, we're also now like, Hey, let's try and cut this back. So it's, yeah, there wasn't really a point in time previously. I don't think where we've gone, Hey, let's be less fat. Let's be health. And it's not to say that, you know, health at all size or any that sort of shit It's just because, well, we were generally struggling to get food, had to go, as you said, four to five days without eating. That fat storage was to get us through that period. That's why we got fatter or put on fat was that it is a storage survival mechanism that I'm not going to eat for this period of time. I need to consume yeah. this food to save it. Yeah. And then I know between my next hunt and this hunt, I have the retained energy to be converted to fuel to sustain me. That's yeah. why the mechanism existed. Yeah. And it's like the argument, not the argument, the comment or the statement about the lion um doesn't eat every four days and then eats one meal and it's like well is that line in starvation mode once they've eaten that entire deer and it's like well yeah because they eat once every four or five days they don't eat they still need to eat often and they don't yeah so it's like they're technically still starving it's just just because they've eaten doesn't mean they're still not starving and it's like you know, yeah just because you're in a calorie deficit and you eat food doesn't mean you're still not in a calorie deficit yeah, <laughs> yeah. same same principle same premise um ooh. Worst date you've ever had. <laughs> Jesus fuck. Uh, um, 
Worst date. I've, I've, I, I don't, don't think I've so few dates. I, so I don't. Hmm, depends what you, I guess you call. I, I guess what the context of the date is like. Is it like you've physically gone out and done something like whether it be you know like a an actual activity or something like that, or is it like coffee, sit down, catch up, a first date? Yeah, I guess that can be something a first date. Like that's still a date, right? I mean, there's Netflix I mean, I, and I, Checkout. I, I, I don't get that either. <laughs> I just before get, my time. I just I just get Netflix. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if you're here, great. <laughs> it's like I think for me, like not so much. I think I've given the worst first date. Well, not even. <laughs> well, yeah, no, I think I've given the worst first date, to be honest. I don't think I've actually had a bad first date. In saying that, it was her fault. So maybe that is my bad first date. Like my first, yeah, my bad first date. If that makes That's sense. Fair. So it's like mine was in response to her. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, like we'd, we'd, we'd been out, like all, there's a group of us, like mates. We all went out like the night before. We went to a bar or mm-hmm. like a bar club thing. You know, boys being boys, they were talking up some girls. One of them was being a pig, so I apologized to her. I'm just like, my mate was drunk. I'm like, look, apologies, blah, blah, blah. We got along. We spoke, caught up the next day, had a, co- had a coffee. So it was just literally just a, an innocent mm. coffee date. Like, cafe that I always go to, the staff know me, like, inside out. I'll be there every day, like, having a coffee. And we're having great chat. <laughs> like, everything, like, it was fucking fireworks. It was awesome. And then 15 minutes into this chat, <laughs> she's like, oh, so what's your star sign? <laughs> Ooh. and I, I sort of again you know i just finished uni so you know i knew everything and i'm like <laughs> you something you've ripped her hard and i'm like sorry what like i was, I was taken aback i'm like huh and she's like yeah i'm just like oh. what's, what's, your, what's your star sign i'm like i i don't know and she's like oh when were you born and i'm like you know end of november she's like oh you're a i think it's a sagittarius and i'm like sure and then she's like oh that would explain a lot i'm like hmm <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, hmm. so you believe the whole stars constellation positioning thing tells you about someone? And she's like, yeah. And I'm like, like, really, like, not they're not very generic things about people across all traits across yeah, the thing. personality like, traits, are they? Yeah, like she's like, no, no, like they're, they're they're very much like you know on point. And I'm like, hmm. I just got up and left. <laughs> nice. Good handle of the situation. And then she, she messages me an hour later. She's like, oh, that was pretty rude. And I'm like, yeah, lose my number. <laughs> Solid. Yeah. Solid. I, look, I look, to my defense, I'm pretty sure she's married with kids right now. Good for her. Um, you, yes. You'd put her on the better trajectory of life. I, I'm being positive. Good. <laughs> now, like if you ask also, me. Also, here's same... a fun fact for everyone playing at home. Did you know that the earliest discovery of tumor growth they named them cancers because when they first discovered them, they started to, they look like unshelled yeah, crabs. Right, crabs. And the crabs at the time, <laughs> yeah. obviously cancer, the star yeah. sign. So like, these are cancers. <laughs> Fucking crazy. The only yeah. time that that's ever relevant, a star sign. Um, well, I guess my only weird one, I end up actually, just a very like good person. We didn't work out, but we ended up dating for like four years. Good, uh, you know, when I was like early 21. Um, I met... I started playing football and I went out to Ipswich. Um, I started playing footy at this rugby league club. They were a pretty big deal. Um, anyway, one of my first games after the game, I'd already made pretty good mates in the preseason with some of the lads in there. And I was on the on the bleachers basically of this club um, watching the seniors play. And there was some um, chicks in front of us who knew the guys that I was with. And so we were all just chatting. And me just being me, I just started dropping like absolute dad jokes, like laughing at these fucking hilarious jokes. I was like 22. This chick is like, the fuck is wrong with you? And I'm just ripping these jokes. Hilarious. Anyway, they've invited me to one of the others, like the senior boys, um, 21st birthdays. I know, fuck all these people, but basically I'm like, yeah, sweet. I'll come. Apparently this chick super excited that I'm coming. I was like, cool as I'll use that to get to know her or something and chat shit. Anyway, these guys have started these drinking games. I rock up late because I come from footy or work or some shit. I can't remember, but basically I've got to play catch up. And they started playing this pinky up game that I had no idea about. But basically, if you get caught with your pinky on the drink you're drinking, you got to finish it. And on top of that, I found out that they were drinking homebrew. So all homebrew spirits. So they've got different bottles. And I'm like, oh, we got Bundy. Like, yeah, drinks are free. Go go ham. I was like, oh, cool. Turns out one of the dads is a brewer. And it was yeah. brewed spirits. And it was homebrewed, concentrated, like rum, whiskey, like all this stuff. And I'm making like, I'm like, oh, I'm going to play catch up. So I'm already making bigger shots than I needed. 
<laughs> and they're like, oh, your pinky's on the cup. Got to finish it. I'm like, fuck, <laughs> finish this shit off. Anyway, basically end up absolutely writing myself off, spewing in the garden. I think I passed out on the toilet at one point. Like it was a 21-year-old Ben with a different time. And <laughs> pretty much, I don't know how, but we ended up chatting more later and dated for like four years, like my first serious relationship. But that was supposed to be like our first chance to catch up at this fucking birthday. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I'm here with the boys and I get to know the yeah. team. I'm going to fucking send it. And I just embarrassed the fuck out. I don't think I embarrassed myself. I kept up until I didn't keep up. And then it was supposed <laughs> to like, we're all going out to like the local club nip switch. And uh, she's like, oh, you're coming? I'm like, I don't even know what date is. I'm like, I'm going to go to the garden real quick. And then the bus left. And I was like, all right, I'm going home. So basically yeah. nailed it. You did that perfectly well. Yes. How else would you handle that situation? I feel like we're going to get roasted during the week. Yes. Good. Whoops. Um, what have you noticed different in this season's judging wise versus season B? Um, I do think there's a little bit of inconsistency across states. That's the... <laughs> yeah, I mean... Is look. that different to season B? I don't know. You're going to get that because you have humans doing yeah. the thing and different humans do different things and even if it was yeah. the same humans they see different things as they get older and things mature and things mm. change so like it's all it's you're never going to get the same judging across two seasons yeah. let alone across two shows let it let alone i guess across two fucking divisions like you got you got to understand I mean, too when it, when it comes to judging too is um they have a criteria and stuff sure they've got the criteria what they're looking for subjectively like objectively this is what fits this category blah 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 but they have to base that on who's best there. Yeah. So in who turns up like, you know, classic division B, yeah. who amongst that division fits that category yeah. as close and as possible. It, that doesn't take away from the judge's own personal bias of what they exactly. actually prefer. Like, yeah, exactly. And it's a subconscious thing. And it's like, you do it when, like, when, when I say you, I mean, you, the listener, and even us, like we, when we watch a show, like I know, like personally, I love structure and flow over ma like muscle mass. Yeah. Like, give me someone that's conditioned with flow over someone that's just a mass monster. Now, don't yeah. get me wrong. Mass monsters are fucking cool. Like, yeah. I'm not saying they're not, but hold on. If I was to be a judge, that's going to catch my eye naturally first yes, versus exactly. the, the, the mass monsters. So it's like, yeah. hold on. If I'm thinking that and I'm just a gen pop person having a watch of a yeah. show, the judges are going to be the exact fucking same. They're going to yeah. have their personal biases. Now, the, their job is to not let their personal biases yes. interfere with their judging criteria or what yeah. they're seeing in front of them. How long can you do that for? Or how often can you do that for considering you're sitting there all day watching yeah. category after category after category? Like, yes. man. And then you got to remember too is like, um, you know, say, I don't know, say South Australia, Western Australia starts the season in season B last year. That's the first show. It's not that judging is going to be the same every single show because there's going to be so many different people like Queensland and New South Wales and Melbourne have much fuller shows than WA and SA. So fair enough. Like what's the best of who's over there? it's probably going to be a different look to what's the best over here. So the judging people is going to look a little bit differently because there's a higher population sample to, to choose from, to vote for or pick, which means there's probably going to be a better chance of getting greater condition or better structure or size. So, you know, there's probably going to be some differences in all of that as well. So, and then on top of that, who was first up in, who was the first of the season, season B is going to be different to who's the first up of the season, season A. So now you've got the okay. different priming effects in the judging criteria and you're like, oh, but SA last year, this one. Oh, but in Queensland this year, this one to start out the season. It's like, yeah, but again, you've got uh, a fresh judging panel versus that judging panel. You've got uh, new looks. You've got a start of the season versus midway through the season. So are they trying to keep a standard? Are they you know, are they setting the standard? Like all that sort of stuff starts to impact and change. So it's hard to say. I just say there's been a bit of not confusing. I'd say there's been uh, just some variations in like, what makes sense in terms of who who's beat who where and, and when they beat them and what made sense about how they beat them just a little bit yeah lost yeah exactly right um <clears throat> female conditioning is so hard to tell what is required now it seems softer than the outlined requirements again this is, this is the funny thing it's like when you look at the criteria, especially for someone like female bikini, for example, it's like they're not meant to have ab lines. They're not meant to have yeah. like a whole, like they're not meant to be that conditioned. They're yeah. meant to be literally the hell. I, I, the way I explain it is like the healthy chick on the beach in a bikini. Yeah. I, I, I guess I don't know how else to explain that to someone. Like when you yeah. look at the healthy lean chick on the bikini, on the beach is like, oh yeah, you train. 
Yeah. That's the look. <laughs> yeah. Judged on the criteria. Now, yes. when you see them on stage, especially when you're watching the pro leagues. Yeah. Like, and I think that's the problem that people, like, obviously, I mean, not the problem, like, obviously, as a as an amateur, you want to chase the pro standard because yeah. that's, that's your standard. Like, I get yeah. it. But again, the criteria versus the standard, I think, are two different things. And they're so far yes. apart in a lot yes. of divisions um, that it gets so heavily skewed. So it's like, yeah. well, you know, you can come in, like, I know someone not, was it last year? Season A, season B? I can't remember. She came in fucking diced, like diced, more diced than the guys. Like mm. I'm talking inside out peeled and obviously got judged down because yeah, she's, too, too, for it. Yeah. Yeah, she's too fucking lean. And yep. the criteria was you're just too lean. And I was mm. like, okay, well you then look at you put her photo against the pros and you're like, well, the leanness is almost the same. Yeah. And you're like, oh, fucking hold on. Like, what, what yeah. do you mean? Like, th- this is the this the problem. And when it it's more prevalent in the females than the males, we know as a male, inside out peeled, you're probably going to do pretty well. Yeah, <laughs> like you're fucking shredded. Yeah, it doesn't matter what division you do. Inside out fucking peeled, you're probably going to win or get close to winning every time. Mm-hmm. Like, it puts you in the in the running. But inside out peeled for a female, it's not a good thing, especially in something like bikini. Yeah, like, you, you can't. You're not meant to have abs. You're not meant to have this. Mm-hmm. You're not meant to have that. Like you're barely meant. You're meant to have glutes and shoulders. Yeah, <laughs> glutes, shoulders can't. No back, <laughs> and can't be too lean. Like, okay, shoulder caps. Yeah, well, yeah, that's what I mean by shoulders. So it's like, yeah, yeah. But I think like too, it. the other side is when you look at um, so your professional level they actually have a professionally registered list of judges that they go over criteria every year. They have a head judge with the understanding of what it's supposed to be looked for. Um, they have the same judges every year at every show, or at least go across the the, the countries and the different States and stuff and, and handle similar judging. So they make sure it's on par because what's dictated at say the Olympia ends up being the standard that is then judged for the year to come. So you kind of get a bit more uniform consistency with the pro level. And once you've set, say like, you know, if every pro female comes on stage and they're shredded, you then have to pick which one amongst that is the most close to the to the to the criteria. Again, like we said, it's what's there and who's available that you have to then judge against the criteria. So, you know, it's kind of you're gonna have well, if they keep rewarding bigger and bigger bust in the booty, well, you're gonna get girls for bikini growing bigger asses. You're gonna get a bit more hamstring pop. You're probably gonna have a tighter midsection because each year they're getting more and more tight. So it's going to start accumulating and started to skew the criteria to the point that it may as well be updated because it's like at some points, yes, you're not even supposed to have a shredded midsection, but when everyone has a shredded midsection, it's like who has the nicer looked midsection and bigger or, or more plump booty and structure and shape to it. So yeah, like you said, looking at the pros to be like, Oh, well, you know, but this is the standard of the pro level. It's hard because we kind of get told if you look at judging criteria on the websites, um, you know, this is how Chris Bumstead does it, or this is posing for this, and this is how you show it off. But at the state level, your amateur level, your local show, it's more so who is closest to the criteria based on who's turned up on the day and who's available. That's going to be what dictates the the decisions and the votes uh, or the scoring. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of, I don't know, because even I was sort of told, like, don't take season A as the full-blown expectation of standard yeah, because – if you look at, I think, season A's bikini, for instance, even in Queensland, a lot smaller in stature than you would look at, say, season B or previous yeah. shows. And that's very, the other, very skinny. Well, that's the other thing. Like, who competes? Yeah, exactly. Like, you can't, yeah, like, who competes and what, what's the crop look yeah, like as a whole? Exactly. So you only you, can only work with the sample population that's there. Exactly right. Um, Tis, what else have we got? Um, worst peak strategies you've ever heard of. Oh, I mean, uh, I'm not, you're not getting yeah. into that. <laughs> that's four days of talking yeah we won't do that last last, last week's conversation was yeah. it last week or week before whatever what i think it was week week before for michael's yeah yeah it was and that's it beautiful well yeah. as always people thank you for tuning in hopefully you're having a great weekend by the time this pops out mm-hmm. i might, and... be in, might be in brisbane i don't know yet we'll see <laughs> <laughs> I haven't decided yet we'll make our mind up i'll decide like i said i'll set i'll decide by tonight <laughs> which is ah. wednesday by the way for anyone listening um but yes, if you have any questions and concerns, as always, DM Ben because yep. it's always fun Good to answer. annoy him. Put him in the question box that we put up on a Wednesday morning, as usual. And, and I believe if you are looking to show some love to Michael, which he is, he was very appreciative of last show, um, and no doubt will appreciate again. If you do want to message him, Michael Coward on Instagram, um, 
or tune in on Sunday. I think the IFBB Pro League is doing a live feed on YouTube. So you will get notified of that if you follow them or just simply look them up on YouTube on Sunday morning. Um, because by the, by the time this is out, it'll be Saturday. So yeah, he'll be on. He's doing novice. So I think it goes masters, novice or novice masters for the nationals. There's no first timers, obviously, because you've already done your first time. Um, so it's novice masters or masters novice. And I think start off as at 10 a.m. Uh, Brisbane time. So yeah, keep that in mind. Jump on there and I mean, throw some Matter Athletic logos up and give us a pump and shout because the more exposure we get there, they're awesome. The better it'll be. And hopefully the big dog walks away with some with some medals. Done and done. Done and done. All right, people. Have a good weekend and we will chat to you next week. See you guys. Goodbye.